Hello. I want to show you how to get started with the PacBio 2K Blunt Library prep method that we developed for the Biomech FX. We actually run this on a Biomech FXP. It's a dual bridge unit. It has 96 head on one side, span 8 on the other. I don't really see any reason why you couldn't run this on a standard FX. Uh, one of the major differences between an FX and an FXP uh, the hardware was upgraded to give you more accurate positioning on the span 8. So you may need to um, add more extra samples so you have a little extra volume. But if the system's set up well, I don't think you'll have a problem. But all the testing was done on an FXP. Okay, let's start with the start step. In the start step, we have some variables. Uh, most of them are ampere variables for timing delays. You got your binding time, your clearing time, drawing time, and a loop time. Those are basically in seconds the delay that's going to occur in the method. The other variable here is your extra samples. Basically, at the beginning of the method, we're going to have to set up a pattern that tells the method where in a 96 well plate your samples are. The method will then count how many wells you've selected. It'll add this number to that number and tell you if you're making the master mix or if it's making the master mix. It'll create some extra master mix um, just due to pipetting errors. You want to have a little extra. Um, we have it set for two here. You may need to increase that if your system is not as accurate. If you're running more samples on a 96 well plate, you may want to make that number larger also. Before you even run the method, you're going to want to tell the method where your samples are in the 96 well plate. And you do that here in the second step of the method, the define pattern step. Basically, it, right now it's set up for eight samples in column one. But if you were running more samples, you just basically click and drag where your, where your samples are in the 96 well plate. Okay, after we define uh, where the samples are in the plate, uh, the next two steps in the method uh, basically just create a global variable that keeps track of the number of samples and the script step basically counts the number of wells in your pattern and sets that global variable to that number of samples. Okay, now that we've defined the pattern uh, where the samples are in the 96 well plate, there's three user pauses, and we're going to go through each one of these and explain what they do. Um, the first user pause will show this window um, asking you to make sure that you empty the tip trash and to make sure that you define the well pattern. Uh, it gives you a chance here to end the method and take care of those things if you didn't take care of those things before the method runs. The second pause will pop open this window. This window has many inputs. The first one is setting the ampere ratio. By default, a 2K library had ampere ratio of 0.6, and that's what it's set for here. The second input is, do you want the FX to make your master mixes? If it's set to a 1, we're asking the method to create our master mixes. If it's set to a 0, we're going to create the master mixes off deck in tubes and place them in the cold block. We'll talk a little more about that later on in this video. The third input, is there an automated incubator on the deck? We run with a T-Robot thermocycler integrated on our deck. When we need to incubate something, the FX basically puts the lid on the plate, takes the plate to the thermocycler. The thermocycler runs. After it's done running, the FX removes the plate from the thermocycler, brings it back on deck. That's fully automated, hands off. I realize probably many people don't have that feature, so I made the option of doing the thermocycling off deck. Basically, if you set the automated incubation to a zero, when it gets to the point that it needs to do some incubation, it will pause. It'll pop open a window telling you what parameters, for example, uh, 25C for 15 minutes, then cool down to 4 degrees. So basically, you have to remove the plate from the deck, put it in a thermocycler, perform that operation. When it's done, put it back on the deck. You simply then hit the OK button, and the method continues. All the other inputs are basically controlling what part of the method will run, starting with end repair. 
So add end repair reagents. If that's set to a one, the method will add end repair reagents to your sample based on your pattern. If it's set to a zero, it won't do that step. After it adds the reagents, there's the incubation step. If it's set to a one, it will perform it. If it's automated, if you told it you had an automated system, it'll want to perform it on the deck in the thermal cycler. If you don't have that, it'll pop open the window telling you what to do. After that, it's the end repair cleanup. So if it's set to a one, it's going to perform the first ampere step. And basically, all these ones and zeros, if it's a zero, it doesn't do it. If it's a one, it does do it. The only input on this setup that you can have other than a zero and a one is that first one where you set the concentration of ampere. You may ask why you have the option of starting in the middle of the method, uh, why we have to set these ones and zeros, but this gives you flexibility. Um, anyone that's run a liquid handler knows things don't always go as planned. Uh, you put a piece of labware in the wrong location, computer glitch, power glitch. Sometimes you need to start in the middle of the method. And I tried to make it relatively easy to do that. You can't start at every minor point in the method, but you can start at major points like at the beginning of end repair, the beginning of any incubation, the beginning of any ampere. This makes the method a little easier to work with um, if things go wrong and you need to start in the middle. In the third pause um, is basically just another pause telling you how many wells you've selected in your pattern. Once again, giving you a chance to end the method if you didn't set your pattern correctly. We just want to make sure, give you one more opportunity to make sure things are set up correctly. Okay, now let's look at the instrument setup. We have ethanol here, or an ethanol lid, that sits on top of a 96 well deep square plate. Uh, that stores our ethanol for the ampere washes. Uh, it's a 96 well deep square. You only need to put ethanol in the wells that correspond to the pattern where you have samples. We have elution tips and ampere tips. These tips are used for every ampere step in the process. They are not washed between ampere steps. All our ethanol, our waste, our elution buffer and our ampere are all kept in a 96 well format uh, so there's no cross contamination we don't wash the tips between different ampere steps we use the same tips throughout the whole process we have a magnet here uh, that our 96 well PCR plate sits on during the ampere process pulls the beads over the side for washing of the, the beads a 96 well deep square that's for waste when we're doing the ampere process, uh, when it washes the beads, that's where it deposits the waste. We have a stack of four 96 well hard shell PCR plates. When it does the ampere process at the elution step, it's going to use the elution tips and transfer from the magnet, which will be holding your plate with your samples in, to a new plate that is placed here at deck location P7. Uh, once it's done the transfer, the old plate is placed on the top of the stack and we continue processing the method. Here is where you're going to place your samples at P7 when you start the method. Uh, right now it shows a PCR lid underneath that is a hard shell plate where your samples are placed in the wells corresponding to your pattern that you've set up in the method. We have a Lucian buffer and Ampure. Um, they're both lidded. They are 96 well hard shell plates. They have lids on them to minimize evaporation. When it comes to the uh, adding the ampere step, the FX will remove the lid. Use your 96 ampere tips to transfer the ampere to your PCR plate. We only need to have ampere in the wells that correspond to your pattern. And you only need to have a Lucian buffer into the wells that correspond to your pattern. We have uh, boxes here of 50 microliter tips. These tips are used to add your master mixes to your sample plate. If you're at the beginning when you're doing the end repair, it's going to use these tips to transfer from the cold block to your sample plate. And let's take a quick look at the cold block here. 
Um, our setup, we use um, tubes in our cold block. They're either 500 microliter tubes, like come in your kit, or they're two mil tubes. A couple of the reagents, um, if we're making master mixes, um, if you're doing a large number of samples, they won't fit in a 500 microliter tube. So we have a mixture there uh, of tubes. There's, most of them are 500 microliters. There's a couple two mil tubes, depending upon what you're processing. And uh, we kind of on the fly switch them out. And we'll talk a little more about that when I go over the procedures. This also has a lid on it. And we kind of customize this. But I want to let you know that um, if you're not going to run 96 samples, 48 samples, if you're only going to run 8, 16, you could actually replace that cold block, let's say with a PCR plate that's lidded, as long as the wells will hold the master mix volume. We're going to have to edit the procedure that does the transferring, but it's really only one step that does all the transferring, and I'll talk a little more about that when I talk about how the method works. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention about uh, the input location P7, I mentioned that um, there's a plate uh, there um, that your samples are placed in, and on top of that it's a lid. But below that plate, there's actually a spring base that allows when the biomech is aspirating and dispensing to that location, it gives the plate some vertical give. So if your tips hit the bottom, it's not pressed hard against the bottom, and the tips won't seal up. It kind of aids in the pipetting depending upon the alignment of your instrument, how even your probes are. Um, this should help in your aspirating and dispensing of low volumes. Also, the magnet itself is an Agincourt magnet, and it has a little spring to it, so it kind of works the same way. Okay, let's look at our cold block. Um, if we tell the method we're going to make the master mixes ourselves, um, it's going to pop a window open that's going to tell us the volumes to mix together. This is where you're going to place them in, your cold, in the cold block tube. In location 19, we'll have the end repair master mix. In location 20, the blunt adapter and water. 21, template prep buffer and ATP low. 22, ligase and water. 23 is our exo master mix. All the other locations will be empty. Okay, and this is the screen that's going to tell us the volume of master mix we're going to need. And these volumes will change based on the pattern we set. In this example, we set the pattern for eight and the number of extra samples we selected in the start of the method. So the more samples, uh, naturally, the higher the volumes are going to be. And it tells you in what tube location in the cold block and what reagents you need to make the master mixes. At the bottom, it tells you you also need to place Ampere and Elution Buffer in their plates on the deck. Um, you only need to place it in the wells according to your pattern, but if you're going to run the full method, uh, it tells you you need to place 160 microliters of Elution Buffer and 110 microliters of Ampere in those wells that correspond to your sample pattern. Okay. If you chose to have the Biomec make your master mix, it'll pop open this window, which shows you where to place the kit tubes in the cold block. But it'll put the master mixes in the exact same place as they were in the previous picture. But you have all your kit tubes up here. Note that there's a 2 mil tube for your template prep buffer in the kit that comes in a 2 mil tube. You'll still also have your 2 mil tube at your end repair master mix. All the other ones will be 500 microliter tubes. And that's basically the input you're going to have to give the method every time you run it. In part two, I'm going to go over the procedures that were used in this method and the logic that's used to run this method. This will give you some idea of how the method works, give you the ability to modify it if you need to. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My email address is here on the screen. Also, feel free to visit the ATP LMT website. The method should be available there for downloading. Thank you.